Hello and welcome to Nurse Table Talk. I'm Nurse Julie and previously I did a video called Embracing Your Gray and my friends and family asked me more about the process. So I reached out to my hairdresser Debbie and she agreed to be a guest on our channel and kind of walk through the process with us on that transitioning. So currently my hair is uh, still has blunt highlights in the front. The back is turning a real pretty silver. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we'll have Debbie take some pictures of, of my hair before we get started. Um, I It was a uh, big thing for me to get my head wrapped around. I call it getting my mental health in order from letting my hair color go away and to transition to gray. So it's a big step and that's why I think family and friends reached out and asked me about it. But um, Debbie is going to show us today on what her next steps are. Last time I met with her, she said that my back of my hair was turning a real pretty silver and she wanted to uh, do some more silver uh, rinses to create some depth and make it a vibrant silver so it's not a dowdy gray. And uh, so hopefully we'll show you how that process works out today. So thanks for watching and let's get started. At my visit with Debbie today, we're going to supply some pictures to show you the steps involved. So where she gets me from my hair color now, which is all over the map, to what it's gonna turn out to be. So hang in there, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, welcome to Nurse Table Talk. This is Debbie, my hairstylist, and she has worked with me in the past about helping me transition my hair to, from coloring my hair and processing it to gray. You know, so, but gray in a sense that for my mental health, it's transitioning, but making it a pretty vibrant gray. As my hair is growing out, it's a little bit everywhere. Okay, so first things first, how did it do for you this last time? It was good. The blonde is a little bit more brassy I agree. now. <clears throat> it, my hair happens to do that. And so I noticed that it's darker in the front, as you can see. Can you see this, Ray? Mm -hmm. As you can see, in the, um, it's darker here. Mm -hmm. It still has the white patches along the sides and the temples, like here it's white. And in the back, I noticed, like, it's got that gray thing going on. So, anyway, that's just where we're starting off today. Okay, are you still locking the whole transitioning into it and into your natural color? Yeah, I like it. I, I like that you did the blonde to okay. kind of help me with my mental health <laughs> transition. I like that. It gives okay. me, it gives me personally, it gives me contrast. I've seen other people with variations in the silver. Right. But for me, what were your thoughts? Um, well, I think that, you, oh, sorry. It has lifted very nicely. I agree that it is a little bit brassy right now. Um, yeah. And that, that happens when you're lifting it out and over time. Right. Um, and also where you had the red on it before. That's a right. big thing is, right. is getting that all the way out. And I think you're, you're pretty much there. I think maybe this time we should add a little bit of low light into it. Meaning just, silver? Meaning a darker, yeah. A like darker a, silver? A darker silver. Just really? to give it a little bit more depth to match where this has come in a little bit darker. Okay. So what that's gonna do, I'll do still do the light. Okay. And so it'll have that, that white, really cool color. Okay. And then have the darker in there as well. Okay. And see before I didn't I didn't think this was that dark. I agree. But with summer, maybe it's where that darkened was, yes. up because of the winter months. Yep. So, and that happens, yeah, that happens pretty often. Maybe we could share some things that you do for other clients to help them transition to gray with the silvers. Okay, typically, what I'll do is I'll lift it to as, as light as I can and keep the integrity of the hair held, and um, that's the most important thing to me. And then, okay. what I will do is tone it. So, I will lift lifting it using highlights, lifts all the pigment out of the hair, and then you have to replenish the, the pigment back into the hair. 
And so at that point, you can kind of choose what will best blend in with their natural hair. Okay, but those are rinses, right? That's not yes. peroxide. It, it is a hair color. It does have pigment in it, but it is not lifting any. So when you think of the hair strain, you have to think of it like shingles on a roof. And every time you use peroxide, it lifts those shingles up a little bit. Okay. And so that's what causes, when you see someone with over-processed hair, that's what it is, is it's just lifted it up to the point where they, they can't be put back down. Okay. So, am I understanding, is it a rinse then? Uh, yes and no. It's, okay. it, 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 I put it on at the sink. I let you sit there for about 10 minutes with it on there. So all okay. it's doing is where that has lifted up. Okay. The, the lightener and the peroxone has lifted up the, the, the hair follicle. Yeah. It is depositing whatever color I want to put in there inside it. But it's different than when I go get my hair color. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because when you use a permanent color, it also has peroxide in it, which is lifting that hair up, so it's damaging. So this is not going to be damaging to your hair. Okay. So. Okay. And that's what I wanted to yeah. share. You know, because processing, you know, after COVID and me losing some of my hair, I'm trying to grow it back right and not you know and not have breakage and right not, absolutely you know and just don't get it back healthier yeah so Okay. So we're in the beginning steps and Debbie is painting the blonde on the top of my hair, which is, she's doing a partial. And she and I were talking about what most people really need help with, getting their minds wrapped around, you know, transitioning to gray. Uh, a lot of times that people will, after they've been doing all over color on their hair, they are scared of letting it go to gray because they think that they're just going to have to let it grow out. Um, and if you don't want to do highlights, then that is what you have to do, is just eventually let it grow out. Because as you lighten it, you can blend in that natural color a whole lot easier. That's awesome. So I have just learned that my 75% gray has now gone up to 100% gray. And uh, that's a little shocking, kind of make my heart flutter a little bit and so the, my next time I come in and see Debbie I have a choice where I can continue to do my transitioning process of using the blonde highlight or I can do a rinse and enhance all my gray um, the reason we're not doing it today is because I have growth but it's not out as far as it should be for the hairstyle that I'm wearing. So what I'm going to do is everything that I have in the foils is going to be lifted out obviously. If you have some blondes that are left out here that'll be toned. Usually I use one toner, one rinse on you um, just for that blonde. What I'm going to do today more than likely is use that like I normally do but also use a darker rinse. silver okay. in order to where you have this brown out here I'm going to try to blend that in a little bit more with the rest of it and as well as all these that are left out to give it a little bit more depth in your hair. Okay. You're cooking. Okay, so um, what I've done is I've just toned you. Uh, I toned it with the darker color first to try to blend in and neutralize the brassiness that was on your ends that were left out. Um, and went back in with another a separate toner for the blonde to try to make it as cool as and light as possible since you were already lifted pretty pretty high um what we were talking about over there was the how transitioning is for some people most people want to do something like this because it's a little bit easier and it's also more cost effective um because as soon as you have quite a bit of gray coming in you're going to see it as soon as that grows out so after two weeks you're going to start seeing gray yeah. so the, doing it this way you're not going to you're going to get more longevity out of your hair okay. so and most, when you say this way you meaning 
putting the blonde, in putting the blonde in to yes. help the gray kind of come in. And it is more, I think of it more as camouflaging it instead of covering it. Um, no, that's a great analogy. Because I'm not trying to, I'm, you're okay with having gray. Right. So right. we want to use it as much as we can and keep it, <laughs> keep you from having to be in here every three to four weeks. <laughs> So, as much as I'd like to see you, you know. <laughs> I know, right? You're not quite there yet as far as um, just letting it be. Um, you need you need a little bit more growth before, I'd say maybe the next two times. Okay. Two, maybe three. Two, two or three visits, guys. Um, but we'll just do the last visit when I totally <laughs> don't put the transitioning blonde in you and prepared just, yourself and <laughs> it's a process <laughs> her color back here was a whole lot lighter than it is in the front so I wanted to make sure that this top was lifted as much as we could and toned with a good titanium color is titanium pearl and cosmic violet I think was the colors you can see a little bit and we use those to neutralize any of the brassiness and yellow that was in her hair I think it blends really well looks good cut, cut. <laughs> so on my previous video called embracing your gray I was recovering trying to get my hair growing back because I had bald spots from COVID. And I had talked about that in the other video called We Three Wigs. And then now with this hairstyle and with what you've done today, it even gives me more volume. I mean, my hair is thin, but it's a lot thicker than it used to be. I agree. Yeah. Uh, even since I've seen you. But yes, that's, a, that's been a common experience with me. Um, I would say almost every person that I have had in my chair that had COVID has experienced some kind of hair loss. Right. Some more extreme than others to where they do have bald spots, things like that. But um, at some point, it happens. Yeah, it's not our imagination, John. So, no, not at all. So thanks to Debbie's magic, I am growing my hair. And you've got a lot of new growth coming in there, too. That's what I'm trying it's to all, deal with. It's all gray. <laughs> and she's trying to tie it in. So this is my outcome that Debbie has done her magic with today. And as you can see, it's a little bit more silver. And uh, when I got out of the rinsing bowl, I had a little bit of more of that. But this silver rinse, and even though she did blonde, the silver toner made my blonde a little bit more silver. So next time I come in and transition more, that blonde is going to be disappearing, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. That's and the plan. It, <laughs> <laughs> and this lady has been a godsend to me because it, um, again, helps me get over the, just the, the mental health piece of the transition. It's really difficult for a lot of people, right? Yes. Yes, very so, well. And we're at Salon 327 in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And Debbie does her magic. <laughs> so be sure and send or come in and see her. And thanks for watching. Nurse Table Talk. Save time, save money, be informed. Thanks for watching.